Hello, my name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlendyDiplom.com and today I'd like to bring you an updated version of the hook modifier explanation. The hook modifier works pretty much as if you grab a vertex in edit mode like that. For example, if I select this vertex here and press Ctrl H, I can choose hook to new object which will create an empty for me. And then if I move the empty around, the vertex stays right where the empty is. Now that's not very exciting yet, but let's have a look at some of the options. I'm going to delete this empty as well as remove the hook modifier. And now I'm going to select all of these, press Ctrl H, hook to new object again. And now you can see it's moving the entire group. That's a little more exciting, but now we can see why we have all those options. Those options don't do much except for the force if you only have one vertex selected. If we use the fall off, you can think of this in the same way as proportional editing works. If I press O to turn on the proportional editing here, I can scroll my mouse wheel and say how many vertices are affected by this and by how many I mean how far a distance from my original vertex has to be in order for the next vertex to be still affected by that. So that's the same thing basically. And if you put the fall off to zero it won't affect anything. All vertices that are affected by the hook modifier by definition and by definition I mean when I pressed Control H will move according to their vertex group. And if I press Control tab here, you can see my vertex group consists of some different weights of vertices, nothing too fancy. And if I choose the vertex group right now, you can see how it influences the fall off or the effect of the hook modifier. If I go back into white paint mode, you can see the darker the red, the higher those vertices go and here the green one which are hardly painted at all. They stay right where they are and the same goes for that blue part here. So that's the vertex group. Let me delete this again. The force is basically a multiplier for the influence of the hook. Meaning that if I turn down the force from anything lower than one you get a percentage of how much the hook modifier will influence or deform your mesh. So I usually use, keep this at one. And there are two more options. You can see they're grayed out, but they do work once you're in edit mode. And actually are four more options. Two of them appear only when you get into edit mode. The most simple one is by basically select, which will select all the vertices that are affected by the hook modifier. You can then also choose a sign and note if you press a sign, only the vertices you have selected are going to be affected by the hook. It's not like in the vertex groups where it's additive and the one that you select will be added to the group of vertices that are affected, but this will limit it to those vertices selected. All the others will get removed from the influence. So let me just reassign those. And let's have a look at the reset. Reset will do basically the same thing as apply rest pose in an armature would be. You can see now it's fairly distorted because the empty is far away from the place where it got created. But if I go into edit mode and choose reset, then this will be basically the rest pose of the empty. If I now move it, then it will deform. And a recenter, if you see this little connection line here, you can see that this is where the edge empty was originally created. So this is basically the center of it. And if I, for example, use Shift S cursor to select it, and then I go into edit mode here and choose recenter, then this will be the origin where 
the empty was created. Those are all the options of the hook modifier, but let's see it in some practical use. I think the most common use you will have for the hook modifier is by deforming curves. Now, this is actually a curve. If I go into edit mode, you can see that. It's just a beveled and tapered curve. You can see that here. And if I go into edit mode and press Control H now, you can see I have the same option again, of course, hook to new object. And if I move this again, it does the same thing as if I were in edit mode. The great difference between using mesh vertices versus Bezier vertices is if I scale the hook, the handles scale with it. Meaning, if I scale this, you can see the handles going further apart. And same goes for rotation and of course location anywhere in space. So this is basically the most common use for a hook modifier to deform a curve. And let's just take this one level further. First, you'll see not much of a difference here, but this is a mesh. It's not a curve anymore. And I have an armature right here. All I did was in insert one bone, make it as long as the curve, and then I subdivided it a couple of times. Then I used a spline IK constraint. I don't want to go into how I did this because it's fairly long and there are numerous tutorials out there on how to do that. What's important is that this here is another armature. It has three bones with custom shapes. And for example, if I choose this bone and then I go out of pose mode, I can then choose the spline. I have to unhide it. Okay, there it is. I'll hide the armature as well. So I choose the armature and I shift click on the spine. Then I go to edit mode. And you can see I also place these bones right on top of the objects. And if I now press Ctrl H, I can choose hook to select object bone. And that is this active object bone here, the one that was active when I left pose mode. And you can see this is working. And you could repeat that for the other two as well, but I'm not going to do that, take too long. Now the big advantage of using an armature over the hook than using a couple of empties is that you can that you have all the keyframes for the armature in one set. If I insert keyframes here, rotation, you can see all those bones are in one set of keyframes under the armature action. Whereas the empties I'd have to, if I were using three empties, I'd have to select them all by themselves if I wanted to change anything. So, so this is a fairly common method of rigging tails or whatnot. And probably the most common use of the hook modifier. I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you next time.